Hey, y'all, and welcome to the Max Life. If it looks dark, that's because it is. It is 4 o'clock in the morning. Myself, Colby, and Aiden are loaded up. We are about to go on a trip. Actually, it's something that the guys have done before. But I have never gone, and I am very nervous. Let's hope this turns out good. Hey guys, we made it. We are on the boat. We're getting bait right now before we head a little bit further out. Still been a pretty good morning of a catch so far. We're hoping it's we're hoping it's a successful day. I'd rather not get slapped in the face by the fish though, Aiden. Oh, 
Oh, he's big. Big old chipper. Yeah, he knows it's his mouth. Do you want to let Daddy get it? No, let him take it. He loses it. <laughs> I'm not letting that thing pull me in the water. Are you crazy? Maybe you could do it. Yes, she could. Bigger than the other one. Hopefully he's nicer than the other one. We should make up that good right there. Hang on. Aiden, you had some wrestling going on. I did. I had some blisters from a rod. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show y'all some pictures as well. I have some really hilarious faces of them reeling in. But it, guys, it was a lot of fun. It was, was kind of slow in the beginning, but things really started picking up. And guys, I have to say this. I really feel like who you go out on the water with matters. So Chris was our guide and he made sure that we had a good time. Even when things got slowed up, he made sure that we were getting our money's worth and our experience. And y'all, that speaks volumes, I feel like, in people. So when we get ready to go again, that's who we're calling y'all. He did a wonderful job. I really feel like who you go out with makes or breaks your experience. And we had a great time. Some fish for sure. Definitely. And it, it would just overall was a lot of fun. And, and one thing is for sure, we barely got out of there because if I was to turn this camera around, it is about to flood. We literally barely got the fish in the cooler. We're headed home. It was a wonderful time. This was actually Aiden's belated birthday present because his birthday was in April, but because of some circumstances, it just kept getting pushed back, but we were finally able to go. And him having a good time is really the only thing that matters, and I think he did. Y'all, as you can see, we just made it back home. We are unloading the truck. We're about to unload the fish. We're gonna get it washed off and sealed up into some vacuum seal bags and store that over in the freezer. Now, to be completely honest with you, I'm not a big fish eater, but Colby and Aiden absolutely love fish. So that is going to be something that they can enjoy. We had a great time, but I'm also not a three o'clock morning kind of person. So needless to say, I am very tired. I usually do not get up at three o'clock in the morning. It has been a long day, but we have had a wonderful time just kind of being off the farm getting away and doing something that we don't get to do very often This is a box of apples that I got from Azure. I believe it was 20 pounds worth, maybe it was 40. Some of these I'm actually gonna pan and put in light syrup. Take the skins off, cut them up into slices and put them in some light syrup and can them because they will make wonderful apple pies that pretty much the filling is already done for you. We are also, what is y'all's favorite fruit out of the freeze dryer? Apples. Pretty much, they love apples right out of the freeze dryer. So, the girls are helping me get some of these sliced and put in the freeze dryer. This does make it very easy. It's pretty handy, it's an apple slicer. And that hole just goes right in the middle and when you push down, it basically cuts your slices for you. Also today, going in the freeze dryer is... 
is this watermelon right here. We're going to cut up this watermelon and get the whole thing in the freeze dryer. And it is, that's probably my favorite fruit out of the freeze dryer. It really, really has a nice flavor. It's almost kind of like a cotton candy taste, but with a crunchy texture, but it dissolves in your mouth and it is so yummy. Peppers, we just picked some peppers this morning. These are also gonna go in the freeze dryer as well as the tomato skins that you guys watched me make salsa with that have been stored in the freezer. So since I have some frozen and some not frozen, my plan is to get this stuff over in the freeze dryer. And what it does first is freeze it, then it dries it, hence the name freeze dryer. So once these get down to zero degrees, I'm going to take my food that is already in the freezer, stick it in the freeze jar. Everything will be frozen and it will continue its process. Okay guys, I forgot, it's still in freeze mode, so I'm gonna open it up. I forgot these peppers, I'm gonna pop them in. You guys have heard me talk a lot about my freeze dryer, so I don't want to get into all of that, but I can say with 100%, it is one of my favorite ways to preserve food because it is so easy. I just washed these, I'm gonna cut them in half, pop them on a tray and that's all I literally have to do to use my freeze dryer to put food up. The machine does the work. Canon is a wonderful way to put up food too. It's probably not my favorite because it is so much work. Okay, we have got a lot knocked out. This is actually gonna go out into my, you guys saw my big five gallon bucket where I have basically like a concoction of fertilizer that I really just kind of have been building up. This is left over from my cheese that is needs to be taken out. I have just ran out of time, so I'm not gonna be able to do that today. Here is the two egg buckets that we have already got cleaned because of course the eggs are coming in and thankfully so, but we wash them and put them over there. These are the leftover cucumbers. To we have two gallons worth of refrigerator pickles. And when I tell you that my kids can literally eat them, they can. So those are just in the refrigerator. These are all the ones that we have left over. I've picked scraps here. This is the watermelon that you guys watched just cut up that is over in the freeze dryer. And I have not even sorted through the okra yet. Some of this is actually too hard because I was probably a week or two late getting out. We had a couple, a handful of pieces coming in here and there. Um, then we got a couple of little batches. And then now, obviously you can see, we've kind of been waiting on it and it is a huge bucket full, but unfortunately, most of it is gonna be going to the pigs. There are several little pieces that we are gonna cut up. And I usually just, um, freeze these. I, I don't really like canned okra and the kids don't really like canned okra very much either and we really don't love it boiled either. So my plan with this is the rest of it is we are going to just wash this and cut it up and freeze it. You guys see that I was nasty and we are going to church tonight so I had to wash my hair and get dressed and I will tell you this while I was doing that I found a tick on myself which can be very, very scary, especially if you're familiar with the issues and complications that you can have from Lyme's disease. And when I went out into the okra, the grass was probably waist high on me and I feel certain that's probably where it crawled onto me at is when I was way out there getting this okra. And y'all, I really don't wanna be negative Nancy here, but you know, in nursing school, always done the studying of the tick is the carrier of Lyme's disease. This is what you do to um, diagnose it, and this is what you do to treat it. These are the symptoms, and you know, then the, then the snowball just keeps going from there. But one thing that they don't ever teach you in the public setting is where did Lyme's disease come from? Is this something that has always been, or is this something that just kind of started? As a child, I don't ever remember hearing Lyme's disease. 
I don't ever remember hearing about West Nile as a child. So I'm just gonna tell y'all this. Y'all do some research. Do not go to the CDC. Look outside of where these things started and I think it's going to blow your socks off. There's a lot of sneaky stuff that happens and goes on that really gets undermined, played into healthcare like it's just always been and that is not the case. So I challenge you guys to do some research and educate yourselves. I think you're going to be blown away just a little bit. But it is very scary regardless of where Lyme's actually started and how it come to be that ticks were carriers of this disease. It is still very serious because it can cause very significant side effects for some people. So anytime I find a tick, it does freak me out just a little bit. And thankfully it had not attached. Uh, I had my hair pulled up in the clip. You guys saw before um, when I was real nasty, still doing chores and stuff. And Sayla happened to spot it climbing up the back of my neck. Ticks freak me out just a little bit. So that is that. Now, I do know some people that save their ticks and date them just in case they do get any kind of symptoms or have any kind of problems. They can send that off for testing. I was so freaked out that I just flushed it down the toilet. But we're going to hope it was it had not bit me. It was trying to get into my hair. So, But it did not bite me, so I, I should not have any problems. And you guys see in the back some extra workers. Yes, that is some construction that is going on in the back that we guys told you we were going to kind of be inching into. This area of our kitchen is not very feasible. This little area for our big table. Obviously, we have a big table because we have a big family in this tiny little space. So our plans are we already have, of course you see, we already have the main structure out there, but these guys are basically gonna be walling us in a sunroom so that we can knock these walls out and expand just a little bit. So a little bit of a project going on back there. I feel like this is just the tip of the iceberg before the construction really starts and we start demoing this. That's when it's going to get real fun. But I just wanted to give you all an update of if you hear something in the background, it's because they've got a concrete saw going back there and it is a very loud. Guys, as always, thank you for hanging out with us. You kind of see us do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Some days it's teaching, some days it's ranting, some days it's just family time, like the very last vlog that you guys saw. So thank you as always for joining along. It, we want to make this educational, but we want to make it fun. We want to show you our everyday lives and we could not do this without y'all. So we always thank you because you guys matter to us. God bless and happy homesteading y'all.